Shalom. It's Brother Malcolm from the uh, branch of GM at Chicago. Giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Double honors unto the apostles of GMS, the true elders of all Israel on earth today. And salutations to the Akim on the four corners of the earth. The confusion of face Akim and the Akwaf that are out there listening and, and learning. To them I say Shalom. Um, had a little incident on the line yesterday. And uh, this Edomite came, you know, and he, he kind of stirred up spirits, but he got cut really bad, you know, with the scriptures. So I'm just going to read a couple things that, that he called for because I started reading them. And, you know, I was so busy into the scriptures at the, at the time. I, I remember hearing a brother say that, uh, that this guy must be a Jehovah Witness. Well, the guy said he was an Israeli, so he was an Edomite Israeli. But even though he said he wasn't a Jehovah Witness, he was declaring a Jehovah Witness, Witness doctrine. And, and of course, he was coming like all Edomites do and uh, trying to get around his judgment and say that, you know, it's, it's for everybody. No, the scriptures clearly say that there's a recompense for the things that you do. And one of them being, being slavery, you know, you can't get around Revelation 13 and 10. But y'all read that. And then I'm going to go into what he... What he mistakenly called for, which cut him, and then what he was trying to get, which also cut him. So this is Revelation 13, and uh, verse 10. And he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So the saints are uh, patiently waiting. Patient means suffering. All right. You know, you suffer in patience. You're suffering while you're waiting to take into captivity those who took you into captivity. And when you know real history, the Israelites have been in captivity since Babylon. All right. From Babylon to the Persians, to the Greeks, to the Romans. To the Americas, you know, the Assyrians, you know, it's it's just been a perpetual, never-ending slavery for the for the Israelites who have been scattered among all nations, might I add. All right, and uh is that 13 and 10? And you know what? There's a precept marked in my Bible. I just want to look at it, decide if I read it when I get there, because sometimes they be on point. And if this this if this is what I think it is, it might be on point. This just goes to show you that the the the, the people these Edomites that print these books and put them together, <laughs> they know that it's talking about them. Yeah, this actually does go. It it, it actually precept Isaiah thirty three and one. Woe to thee that that spoilest and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. And when thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. So slavery was treacherous. We were killed by the sword. The, the Edomites were blessing was the sword. So with that sword, they took down all the nations of the world violently. And then they took down the Israelites and enslaved them and sold them to captivity to the four corners of the earth. And now we're living in a time where the Israelites are waking up. And yes, they're going to be dealt treacherously with. Okay, but since I'm in Isaiah, let's go there because that's what he asked for. He... He kept calling for Isaiah, the 44th chapter, verse 3, verse 4, all right? Yeah, verse, yeah Isaiah 44 and 4. But what he meant was Isaiah 44 and 3 because he tried to correct himself. But I'm going to read Isaiah 44, the first chapter starting at verse 1. And this, and it just, like I said, it cut him to the bone, man. It says, ye know, ye yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. So he was cut right there. All right. Thus saith Yahweh that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, for, th for thou just run whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. 
Right, and then he wanted four. And they shall spring up as among the grass and the willows by the water courses. But that was just made it clear that that was talking about the sons of, of Jacob, man. It was talking about the seeds of Jacob, man. Their sons and daughters, all right? The patriarchs, their sons and their daughters. That wasn't, that's not talking about any other nation. So he was extremely cut with that. Um, but what he meant was Isaiah 43. So he tried to backtrack. And uh, yeah, it was Isaiah 43 and 4. He tried to use that scripture. And then he tried to connect it to 1824 with Joseph Smith. I think Joseph Smith is a guy who was the founder of the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, Jehovah Wickedness, as we refer to it, to that sect. And and I just explained to him precepts, uh, which I'll go ahead and read that. This is Isaiah 28. Because I said what you're saying, man, when you read the scripture, Isaiah uh, uh, 44 and 4, it has nothing to do with Joseph Smith. Nothing at all, man. All right? Uh, verse 10 and 12 uh, and 13 in Isaiah 28 and, and uh, 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is a refreshing. Yet they would not hear, but the word of Yahweh was upon them, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. And he was snared and taken because it's not for him. Only the elect are going to hear this, man. Only the elect are going to understand this. So you don't read the Bible like you read a novel. You just don't start in, in, you know, in Genesis and in the beginning and then go to he who leadeth to captivity shall go into captivity. You're not going to understand it that way. Although the end, you know, Revelation 13 and 10 is pretty much the end game. When the Lord comes back, somebody has to go into slavery and it's not going to be the Israelites that are already in slavery. It's all the other nations. So he was extremely cut with that. He couldn't substantiate the claim that he made uh, talking about Joseph Smith. So I just thought it was bugged out that the fact that this guy was an Israeli. It's like, you know, you should have just stuck with Judaism and, and, and the Talmud and Kabbalahism. But I guess, you know, he was a, he, but he's claimed that he wasn't a Jehovah Witness, even though he was pushing a Jehovah Witness doctrine. So I guess he was a Jehovah Witness sympathizer. I don't know. But this is uh, Isaiah 43. And I'm starting at verse 1. All right, because he wanted, he was calling for verse four. So I started at verse one, and it says, "But now, thus saith Yahweh that created thee, O Jacob." He was cut there. Um, my servant, whom I have chosen. Oh, I'm sorry, I went to the wrong place. Um, and he, it, let me start again. It said, "But now, thus saith Yahweh that that created thee, O Jacob, and and he that formed thee, O O Israel, fear not." For I have redeemed thee, and I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. And, they went, and the only people that wear the name, and that's how you know that, that you know, we're the people of the Lord. We're the only people that wear the name of, of Yahweh. All right? Because where's the people called Jesus? Where's the people called Jehovah? No, it's Yahweh. All right? Yahweh, which is mean he is. Yahweh Shai, which means he is a savior. Okay? And then Yasharala. That's how you say Israel properly. Right, which means he is a prince of the power. What a prince of the powers uh, before. Okay, he's a prince of the power of Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, verse two in Isaiah forty-three, it says, "When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the the." the flame kindle upon thee all right for i am yahweh thy power the holy one of israel the savior i gave egypt for thy ransom in ethiopia and sabah and for thee so that was talking about the israelites and those lands were given to us that i just spoke of and those lands are full of heathen again all right but the lord's going to re redeem his uh his 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 uh you know he's going to redeem his people and fulfill his promise all right and then he then he started he went to Romans 11 but when you go to Romans 11 all right when you start if when you read verse 1 
I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. I say, this is Romans 11 and 1. I say, then, have Yahweh cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's telling his people that he that they're not cast away how could another nation or another other races of people fit into this equation All right verse 2 yahweh have not cast away his people which he foreknew what ye not what the scripture saith for last he that maketh intercession to yahweh against israel saying so this is making it clear that the, the romans 11 chapter is to israelites as a matter of fact the whole book of romans is is the whole bible is all right, James one and one says to the twelve tribes scattered abroad, greetings. So that means all, all the all the books in James are to the Israelites. The rest of the Bible is the same way. Okay, but I'm going to go down to verse eleven. All right, because you get controversy with this scripture. Then saith, this is verse eleven. I saith, then have they have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fail, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And that was talking about the wicked Jews. But the Gentiles here, that word there is ethnos. And when you look up the definitions, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go straight to the ones that matter, the ones that fit. You know how you used to watch Sesame Street? And it would give you the the multiple uh, uh, question, or it would show you the little box thing, one of these kids don't belong, or one of these things don't belong. And you had a little box with all the things that were that were related to the the first thing and something that was completely oddball these these are the only definitions that 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 match the scripture and, um one definition was a multitude individual of the same gene genus genus meaning the same origin the same forefather the same sperm line and and, and this this chapter started off with him saying he was an israelite and that the people of god he was of the tribe of benjamin declaring his Israelite heritage and that and then and then referring to his to, to the entire heritage the other 11 tribes that Yahweh have cast not his people so how can you fix your lips to bring someone else into the equation so you people don't want to accept the truth man all right uh, verse 12 now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminish of them be the riches of the Gentiles how much more their fullness all right so this is talking about Israelites, man. No other people. Let me read another part of the definition. Um, a human family. And then the last one was a tribe, a nation, a people group. It's, come on, man. I'm going to go back to Isaiah 40, 40 and, uh, for, I mean 43, and I'm going to read verse 10 and, and, and wrap this thing up. This is uh, verse 10 in Isaiah 43. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh and my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before 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 me there is no power formed neither shall there be after me so the only power is Yahweh by Shemal Shai man and his witnesses are the northern and the southern kingdom man those are the two witnesses that are talked about in the book book of uh, Ezekiel the 37th chapter the so-called Negroes Latinos and Native Americans make up the, the southern and the northern kingdom of Israel, and they're and they're being, and that's the temple in the house of David being rebuilt. All right, the elect. Okay, because he's gonna reveal it, reveal it his things. He's gonna reveal it to the prophets, and all the prophets were Israelites. So let's get a scripture to prove that. Because I'm gonna get two more, and then I'm done. This is uh, Amos. Uh, three and seven, and it's and it reads. Surely Yahweh power will do nothing but revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So only the prophets are going to get this. Going back to Romans, the book that Paul wrote. All right. Let's go back to Romans 8 and 16, I do believe. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh, man. So the reason we understand this book and understand the prophecies and the mysteries that are written therein because we have the prophets come back. So we don't care if you don't believe it. And with that, I'm going to say, Shalom.